Hi, my name is Kathy Clark. I'm a neuroscience clinical nurse specialist with Phoenix Neurological Associates. The purpose of this training session is to assist in preparing you to perform epidermal nerve fiber density biopsies. We will break this training session into five parts. The first section will review some of the documentation forms that we've provided in your packet, uh, looking at consents, chart documentation, uh, as well as training uh, the patient or educating the patient. In the second step, we'll go over some of the different um, uh, sites that biopsies can be performed and what are the actual measurements to those sites. Thirdly, we will then also go over some of the equipment that you'll need to perform the biopsies, some of the equipment that both we will provide to you and then equipment that you may want to consider having uh, available for your use. Uh, fourth area, we'll actually perform a couple biopsies and go through, again, the technique of performing the uh, epidermal bi biopsy. And then finally, we'll review the, what I call the pearls to remember, some of the key areas to kind of review and summarize our training session. Uh, so first session, let's go ahead and look at some of the documentation, the forms that are in your packet. The very first one you'll see is entitled the consent for the actual skin biopsy. Um, this is a template. It's for your purpose only and your use only. If you choose to use that form, that's fine. If you would like to modify it in any way, that's okay too. Um, the importance is that we need to get the patient's consent. We need to explain to the patient uh, what the procedure is all about. So we tried to incorporate in our documentation both a consent as well as the patient education um, area. And we have the patient sign our consent. We have them also initial the uh, patient education area on the bottom of the form. Um, and then we make a copy for their uh, use so that they have a copy to take home and review those same points. The main areas that I'd like to go over is the patients need to understand there basically is not a lot of limitations after we do these biopsies. Um, they will have a Band-Aid that's applied immediately after the procedure. This Band-Aid needs to stay on for 24 hours. Um, the next day they can take a shower, remove the bandage. Soap and water is okay, taking a shower is okay. We just encourage them not to use abrasives, not to use any heavy perfume soap. Uh, when they get out of the shower, pat it dry and put a clean Band-Aid on. The Band-Aid needs to be replaced every 24 hours or whenever it gets wet. Uh, the only real limitation is they cannot soak in water. No hot tubs, no um, swimming, no taking tub baths for at least three or four days after these procedures. Um, people scar a little bit differently. In some cases, they may see a little rib raised area um, in a couple months, maybe even a little pockmark. But in general, uh, in a couple months, they're not even going to be able to tell where these biopsies were taken. But we do let them know the potential of side effects as far as infection, um, irritation to the skin, um, the, the, those are possibilities. We also encourage our patients not to put anything on these biopsies. This is a punch biopsy, and we want it to heal in this fashion. We suggest that they don't use things like Vaseline, Neosporin, or anything that can kind of cake into the biopsy, heal over top of that, and then cause some irritation. Um, the next form that I'd like to review with you, again, this is for your purposes. Uh, if you choose to modify this form or you prefer to dictate the procedure after you've done the biopsy, uh, that's at your discretion. But we have provided a procedure note for the chart. And this basically uh, states the procedure that you're going to perform. Um, you identify the sites and the location and um, the fact that Zamboni fixative uh, is used and that the sample is then sent to us for processing. 
Um, the next form is one that you do need to use. This is our form, um, the, our laboratory requisition that we need completed and sent back with the actual sample. This form is referred to as laboratory requisition. It um, asks that you provide not only the patient's name, the date and the time that the biopsies were taken. We need to have copies of the patient's insurance card, both front and back, and preferably if you can enlarge those uh, cards when you make a copy of them. If your office has a face sheet that has the patient's demographics, their address, phone number, that type of information, and even a face sheet that provides the insurance information, we've asked that you provide that as well. Um, this form is completed again to identify the sites that the samples um, are being sent and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get that sample back to us. We will be providing both the kits to do your biopsy. We will also provide you with the Zamboni fixative. The Zamboni is kept at room temperature. Um, you do not need to refrigerate or cool the specimens to even send, us ba send them back to us. The main thing is, though, that the FedEx fly, um, must, must be notified when to pick up the sample. It needs to be picked up same day with next day delivery. Um, the other points on there, uh, we've made note of contact numbers. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us uh, about the specimens. We do ask that you contact Suzanne to let her know that a specimen is on its way and also she will be your contact if you need to order any new kits and more supplies. Finally, the last form in your packet is actually a physician billing code. Uh, this is for your purpose only so that you can bill appropriately for the biopsies that you do. There is one code for a single biopsy and then any additional biopsies would be a second code. There is basically only two diagnostic codes that you're going to be using. One is for neuropathy, the other one is for numbness. Um, that is uh, covering the forms.